Hi, I'm Mary. I usually don't really do these kind of long things, but it's a weird year anyway, so I figured, why the hell not? So, I'm going to start a new project, and it's going to be a cosplay. I've never actually done a proper cosplay. I wanted to do a cosplay that's not being done very often, so that immediately brought me to um, the Swan Princess and Anastasia. And I really love both, and it was kind of, I gotta say, Anastasia one because there's one gown in particular that I've always adored, and I would have loved to see it. Um, on the stage of the Anastasia musical, which I saw in the beginning of this year, and I distinctly remember being a tad bit disappointed that it wasn't because I was really rooting for that gown. I've been doing a lot of research these past few weeks on um, undergarments and supported garments and um, the rules that uh, Imperial Russia had on the court gowns. So, um, I've decided on going for a chemise. On top of it will go a corset. The actual garment will be made from a uh, lovely brocade that I found. That's going to be heavy because it's a skirt with a trained skirt on top and it, it will be all very heavy if that won't be fully supported. So I'm thinking crinolines to also kind of stay with um, the aesthetic that the movie had, even though um, the f photos that I found of Anastasia's sisters had skirts that went straight down and were obviously not supported by crinoline at all. Um, Color-wise and shape-wise kind of stay with the movie as, after all, it's still a cosplay and it's not an actual historical garment anyway. It's going to be a long project, as you know, summer is basically cancelled anyway, so it won't be for this summer's rent fair, it will probably be for next year's rent fair. It's also probably going to be expensive, so to kind of save myself and my budget, I will probably start out with the undergarments, which um, will probably be made out of a cotton. Undergarments first. Um, outer garments seconds. So yeah, wish me luck. At first I found this great taffeta and it's really pretty and it's actually not meant for the undergarments. <laughs> it's meant to be her sash and, and I think it will look great with a little trinket up there. Some big jewel at my waist. I stumbled on this linen. It's a blend it's linen and um, viscose, which I believe is also referred to as rayon, rayon. No, it's mainly linen, so they'll be nicely breathable. And I think I will use this as this fabric for the undergarments. And um, when I when I took hold of it, I, it also felt sturdy enough to me to probably use as lining for the corset too. Um, depends kind of on how much I'll have left when I finish the chemise. Of course, pretty lingerie has to be decorated with lace. It's obligated. So I found this cute lace and I'm not sure whether I'll just use it on the chemise or on the corset too because it's really cute and I've bought plenty. And I wanted the, some lace that would be a bit more uh, sturdy than the regular Chantilly, for example, lace and one with uh, these kind of holes in it so I can add a cute little satin ribbon to go in those holes. So, you know, that will go like so or like so. And I want the bottom to have a bit of a wider strip of lace. So I found one that's uh, really kind of a uh, similar type of lace so that's that one and maybe i'll cut the little because there's just a few two or three threads in there maybe i'll cut that too and thread the satin ribbon in between here as well 
I'm not sure yet, but I really wanted something bigger on the bottom. And I think these go, these go quite well like that. I think they go well together, don't they? And when I was also internet shopping, I found this bit of fabric and I could not just not buy it because it's gorgeous. Look at that. It's so pretty. It's, it has this very subtle shine. And um, I'm thinking of using this again, not for underwear, or maybe underwear, depends. Um, for the outer fabric, so for the sleeves and the um, trim to go around the bodice and the skirt. Why I was thinking about uh, having to buy um, busks and boning and whatnot, I found this ugly old thing. I probably it's the first corset I've ever bought way back before when I didn't know anything about sewing and I just wanted something pretty. Never worn it though. Um, but it has a busk and it has boning and I'm not sure what type of boning but it's very very flexible and I will definitely have to get more bones because this would not be sufficient um, but it has boning in it okay. it kind of feels like flat too anyhow um, I can use the ribbon I can use the boning, I can use the busk. And so I've partially deconstructed the corset, so it's now all floppy. And um, as expected, it was filled and filled with plastic boning. And it's rather useful because I'll uh, probably won't use spiral steel, I'll just use this stuff. And I have some. Um, different mine's more flat but similar to this so i can use that and now i've also got my busk which saves me about eight euros so that's nice so that was the biggest clue i got from it other than that it does feel sturdy-ish it's not as not as sturdy as a regular so I couldn't sleep last night and in my 2am Google sessions I decided that we're going for the elliptical hoop skirt from Trudy Victoria. Usually I draft my own patterns but in the case of an elliptical hoop skirt I really cannot be bothered with the map. So to anyone unfamiliar with the Trudy Victorian patterns, this is the one I'm going to use. This afternoon I've ordered the, uh, the materials I need uh, and some other little things I needed so that was quite a hefty, uh, hefty price to pay and I think I've already spent 150 euros on this so if you ever think of doing this too, don't. Welcome to my floor and my old Singer sewing machine from the 1920s. Um, I'm thinking of using it to make the chemise I think I'm just going to eyeball it. So, that's the pattern that I'll have to assemble. To make up for all this paper, I've printed it on the back of my old course. That's puzzle.
So cut out the pattern and um, already kind of arranged it on the fabric. The fabric I'm using is a remnant uh, my grandmother gave me when she uh, made my curtains in my living room. And there are this kind of see-through wall thingy. I don't know. But it, it's really non-stretch and sturdy and it, it can take a beating. And I'm hoping to use that bitty bit over there in my corset so I have a nice lightweight summer breezy gauzy thingy corset. It's now starting to look like an actual hoop and it's really fun to play with. <laughs> Nearly done, just gotta do all the hand sewing which I don't like but it's gotta be done. Crinoline is done! Whoop, whoop. So it's um... Uh, 11 30 p.m. at night and my dog is very tired and you can see a bit that I drafted a pattern right there uh, I drafted this pattern uh, with the free to ooh, there you go with the free tutorial from foundation reveal that here's the new pattern and it's you know inspired by the pot one uh, except hopefully this is in the proper sizing but before we are going to actually make the corset we're going to make a mock-up first so the chest area is a bit big and um, I kind of you can't really tell on camera but I kind of scribbled around there that I want hey that I want these two panels corded I'm not sure if I could do it on this one because the busk is Right there, it's just a little puppy. <laughs> Hi. And um, we also had to slash this apart really far, so we'll just go nuts on how far we want it because I want dramatic hips and we'll also cord that so it's actually dramatic. I don't think I'll be in. <laughs> Someone wants attention. <laughs> Other than that, I don't think I'll change that height of the bust because uh, if I go to cord this this will shrink <laughs> I, I guess I'm going to have to give some puppy love first <laughs> all right so yesterday I um, adjusted the pattern and this scribbly bit is where I wanted to be corded I'm not sure if I'm going to stop about there or we'll just see I guess um, so that's the second one um, here's the first one so this is the center front and that's the panel that goes on the bust and I wanted to cord it this panel and um, the one right next to it um, then I also thought uh, it would be fun to actually uh, make the hip panels out of this fun silk taffeta kind of I believe it's faux silk um, which I used for a bridal project and um, for a custom order it is a bit lighter and also of course this is not shiny this is a bit shiny so I thought it would be fun to kind of have a contrast by uh, making the hip panels out of this taffeta and also probably the bone casing. Here's the first little bit, still got plenty of way to go, already noticing the um, shortening of the upper fabric, which is of course logical and I thought about it and I kept it in mind, however I wasn't sure how much length I would use so I just figured you know we'll just go with it we'll just cut it uh, the same length and we'll see what happens 
so of course it's shortening and we will have to fix that because this will only crawl further and further upwards um so i'm already liking this because look at how moldable that is it just kind of stays in the shape so here we are some uh, hours and some movies further um i quickly attach the front to back so uh, that's what we're looking at here um currently they have this really odd shape because uh, the final hip will sit about that way so as you can see the camera makes a really really pointy um hip right there which of course will have to be uh you know pressed and stuff uh, however of course a hip does not do this <laughs> so um i was just planning on uh you know keeping this simple for myself for now and when i try it on um uh, nicely making this more of a curved seam so about that the cording is all done and um i thought i would have had sufficient cord because i use this whole thing and we're all out so just missing a bit right around the tips oh well so here's the first half the right half to be specific um there's a great curve on the hip right there so that's really fun because i i found this um organza fabric in my stash and um, it's quite a lot i had left i don't hate the look it's pretty purple i think of it as a pedicle and maybe it'll work like it i'm gonna do it um it's cheaper this way No, I just nicked my chemise with my scissors. Dang it. Petticoat is all done. Could have been more uh, fluffy, I guess, but that's all we have left so this will have to do yesterday evening i finished the corset or at least the most important parts of it i'm still in the process of flossing because i didn't do anything more than these bits and of course as this is a mannequin and not my body the fit is quite horrendous because on my body i actually have a little bit more hip so this gets filled out really nicely and then you have that really great you know curve <laughs> like that um I, it fits i fitted it yesterday evening and um i was out of battery so you'll just have to believe me when i say it fits oh right i also had to add a bit here because my boss was too short otherwise and I don't know you know you can always chop it off later if you really hate it I guess but I don't mind this I'm also glad I didn't pick blue because that would have been too much I think Ooh, we got a little delivery there it is and it's a really pretty fabric too there's a print on there this side is kind of raised a bit and this one is not so i'm guessing this is the right side and that's the wrong side because that seems logical to me the plan is uh, to make this the base skirt i'm still deciding on whether or not to have the closure that we'll have at the end if i'll have it in this pink the gold that will come on top or the white fabric probably have to see the whole thing together to decide on that uh, yesterday we 
drafted this whole bit to make sure I could get around the curve of the booty. So, that was a pattern. Um, it took us a bit to make because obviously you cannot, you know, draft this on a table. Or at least I don't because my table is not big enough. So everything, as usual, is done on the floor. And now I'm going to return to the floor and cut that out. That's a very close, very close call. It's a skirt. This is really comfy. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Final update on the corset. We're done. We flossed all the bits. This one is my personal fave. I've had a really rough time getting the bones, you know, pushed down on top of that thing. And I don't have a thimble, so my fingers are really sore right now. Um, as you can see, tack down the lace. That's nice and flat now. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. Also a big update on the whole quest for the gold fabric. Thanks to a lovely client of mine. Hi Claire. Um, she helped me finding it. She found the perfect gold jacquard fabric with a kind of shimmer in it. The yellow fabric has arrived and I'm cutting it and we've already cut two panels right there. Um, we're skipping the first one because that's the open bit and then I've also um, kind of left out a bit on the second panel for the little white strip that's usually on the fabric. And while I was cutting I noticed my atelier is too small. And this little guy gives zero fucks. It is very, very cloudy outside, so excuse the horrible lighting. Um, however, we're kind of looking at a semi-finished skirt, or halfway, I think, I guess. Um, I've cut all the pieces yesterday, and that's the train. Here she is all searched, and um, I'm using the closer-up camera because it shows the color and the print way better but I mean here she is she is absolutely massive these two bits are just the elongated version of the pink skirt so the panels are the same they end up the seams all end up in the same place and then I just added this big triangular bit obviously i still have to cut everything in a more organic shape because now it's kind of you know going odd i'm also thinking of maybe some maybe making this a bit less wide because it's very very well it's very big right now so i've flipped over the train I'm taking this and that bit out it just feels a bit more natural to me and when i've done that i'm going to just cut this off and make you know make it a bit like like so and after and of course there's going to be a big ass dust ruffle underneath and that's going to be probably the biggest in history because it's going to have to start from there about there and end up there i mean sure just go ahead and scratch right on top of my train who cares right nearly all the bones are in i didn't videotape all of it because i was busy watching a coco with life stream which is really fun these are the highest ones i think And then there's the direct one and the other little ones, you know, just around the waist. And these little cute ones. So, that's that. Alright, so welcome back to my floor. Um, I'm kind of like stuck.
stuck on this girl right here um also depending on the color of the let's say let's call it the closure strip but i don't know if I'm, it's going to be pink or gold and i also cannot remember if i vlogged about that or not completely aside of that we need to make that balayage or dust ruffle or something to stop my train from getting hella dirty let's just guess well let's just move on to the thing that we can already do so i thought you know i could just search some ruffles and that's where this stuff comes in it's really cheap lining it's polyester as heck it was only two euros a meter so i got seven i am going to cut that in little strips not all of it. I already um, kind of took off what I needed for covering the bottom of the train. There you go. So I've cut everything. Um, really simple. I'm just going to set myself up behind my serger and, you know, roll, um, serge, whatever. All these little bits. Okay, so this is the strip I did yesterday. It's only one single one i did so this strip was originally about three meters something something and it is now uh, after i box pleated everything it's been reduced to about 135 i think i'm not sure you need about three times the length of the final length you want it i'll probably iron it so the pleats stay in position before or after i sew them down fun meal today um i kind of unexpectedly ordered an embroidery machine this will really help me with the embroidery on the final dress Ooh. so the first bit on the actual garments um i am quite surprised unfortunately it's not as far to the edge as i actually wanted or hoped it would be but you know oh well um i kind of had to guess where it came because i only cut this part which was in hindsight not that smart because you know it's hard and uh, i also hooked it the wrong way around so all the fabric of the dress is kind of hunched under there and was laying on this side instead of nicely draping on this side however happy accident because i had to turn the uh design around i had to rotate it 90 degrees it rotated the right way because of course i didn't you know write down or whatever which side was up so Yay! I rotated it wrong but right and well, I guess a double negative is a positive. So um, I'm going to um, fight probably with this and struggle a lot. Okay, that was more stressful than I thought it would be, but I mean the second one is on there. I just discovered something and then close to hyperventilating or crying or both or i don't know how i feel about this but this is a package of the embroidery designs used on the actual quad gown <gasps> oh my god dun 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 So, um, above that embroidery pattern, <laughs> I waited a night, decided I really needed it, then luckily I got a coupon code for like 15% off, so that was really cool, and now we're doing a test patch. Whoop whoop! It's been a few, few days and um, I've been just working on the train bit, which is quite a big puzzle and it's basically um, the base of it is this line as it's going right now and um, this little bit has taken me all day hello it is January January anyway 
and uh, I have kind of a teeny tiny holiday so I've been embroidering the past two uh, days and I ran out of thread so it is now as we speak February 8th of 2021 and I have finally finished the right side of the train but only the right side I still have to do them maybe I still have to do everything else so you know I'll probably be embroidering until the end of time and we finished everything on the train we need to do the bodice and the pink skirt but the biggest challenge of them all and of course because i have my own little logo and i sneak her in isn't she a beauty mm. welcome back it is today april 6th 2021 um we are this far in our adventure we have a palahinus kind of figured you'd like to see what on earth I did. I press my my dust ruffle flat. You're now looking at the side that's supposed to be underneath so it's actually upside down. This is just flat on this side. So as you can see it kind of goes in a C shape or lunar shape or whatever you want to call it and then the, the train is going to flop over it. And as you know Bark splints are kind of flat in themselves, especially when pressed. I don't think this will give much of a raised side. So I think I'll we'll stick with, with how it is. I quite like it. Yay, this is done. Uh, except for the part that I have to conjure up some kind of way to attach it to the bottom of my train. And there's the other issue. This is my very last bit of embroidery thread, which I thought would be plenty because, you know, the train is done, the bodice is done, I'm sewing that up, I'm just discussing with myself what the hell I did on the sleeves of the lining a year ago because they don't really match up. That's a little bit of a headache we'll figure out in a second. Okay, so the lining is in. This part still has to be spiralized. For some reason, I don't know why, I decided that I would put in the tiniest of bone and I am seriously doubting if I should redo this bit because I don't know how on earth I'm going to fit both a bone and both some eyes in here. Okay, okay, I think we're good. I, I went ahead and did cut it all the way. And I kind of, you know, got to bend it in a semi-straight shape-ish. Um, so here we are the next day and um, I've been sewing in all these hand-finished eyelets. Or actually my uh, sewing machine has an option for hand-finished eyelets. Kind of. And because of the bone it, it tended to slide a bit off. All the holes it, it sewed by itself automatically it, it was kind of a misshapen either a c that was a bit off or a c that was a bit open anyhow it, it shifted a bit too much so i had to finish everything by hand uh, which is okay because uh the machine saved me half the work and i'm doing the very last one they're all in there and they should be positioned in such a way that we can spiral lace it so they don't match up except for the upper ones she is looking lovelier by the day 
I'm thinking of just letting out the back of the train skirt a bit you know just making this dip a bit lower so I can pull this bit up and this line will move just a bit forward as for this one so we can you know match those up nicely and it's one matching column um, so this is how the lacing turned out the sweet thing about spiral lacing is that you can make the edges overlap i'm not sure how to tie this up yet i'll, I'll just have to figure out a way of how to properly do that and probably i don't know where, where do you leave this bit do you tuck it back in somewhere what did they do so we need sleeves and as i have not yet decided what to do with this issue over here with the embroidery i'm not sure yet if i want to embroider the sleeves because if i want to i can't add them yet because it's easier to flat to embroider on a flat bit of fabric yep perfect i just need because like we have some bling here i just want like a big sparkly thing over there to finish it and a nice necklace i know she has some i think she's wearing some kind of choker i'm not sure i think but i mean this neckline is wide enough for something big and sparkly i just haven't figured out what yet and then we need a tiara to match it on top tiny update it is now the 23rd of april and um we have red which is not a perfect match but okay and this <gasps> look at it isn't that gorgeous i scoured the internet for so many tiaras and this was the one that was assembling the proportionate the most and then i have this gorgeous necklace and uh, we already had that one and this really pretty brooch with also a dangly bit to match the necklace some earrings to match and i know this is not like in the movie because she was wearing this joker kind of thingy but i thought honestly I, I think she deserved more bling so we went with more and i kind of felt inspired by the picture of her mother on her i think it was her wedding day where she has some really big blingy necklace and then above that there's also a big blingy choker so the choker is still on its way i'm not sure where it is so but we'll see whatever hi again it's been a while it's now the 19th of june and um i'm almost done almost there's the waistband embroidering the um underskirt i guess and i have just finished the original uh prone of synth thread that i had and this is madeira especially from a distance and when i don't point it out at all you can tell on the sleeve issue i've taken out my mannequin again and simply just kind of creatively draped the sleeves i really wasn't sure how to pattern those especially you know flat pattern those and I got this weird fishtail shape and I'm just embroidering this on the edge so this is actually one repeat however it was really hard to match these up because instead of starting right there as all the others did it starts in there which is really hard matching up because you have to match up that line so I decided on uh, stitching them out separately because they're also in bits so stitching out the straight long line first and then the little thingamajig next to it as i did not have the perfect amount of fabric to 
applying them and I thought, well, I'm using a period. So um, I creatively ish made a little lining out of the same fabric so uh, you won't see the inside of the embroidery, which is not that pretty. <laughs> so, hey, that's it on the sleeves and then attach the sleeves, hem the stuff, attach the values. Oh wait, um, let's hold this good. Hello. Hey, am I glad I purchased two instead of one because we have one half of the sleeve to go. She's got sleeves and they are so pretty and nicely lined so you don't have any embroidery peeking through. I've uh, hand finished some little bits, so uh, for example here it didn't, you know, meet up to the cold fabric, so I finished that. I don't think you can really tell. It looks alright to me. Um, they feel pretty heavy. One, the only thing is, well, you know, they don't match up perfectly color-wise, but oh well. into my floor and I am on the floor because this gorgeous is my view. Look at her. Look at her shine. I've done I think nine buttons and we are there. And we have to go all the way up there. And the strip, this one here is attached. I still have to attach it with little hooks at the back on the bodice. Um, I think you have a way to hide this and then uh, attach the values to the train and then she's done so I'm after all still attaching the values simply with buttons while I am doing that and you know figuring out where the buttons should be I'm having this little issue over here Trains are apparently very comfortable. Hmm. Good sir, you are in my way. Okay, so this is currently 2 a.m., which is why I'm whispering. And I was uh, only not so much in the best ideas at night. So that's why I'm still. Dear ladies, gentlemen, gentle people, I present to you my pandemic surviving project. Here she is. She is all done.
So I wore the gown to the FAX Comic Con convention, which was really fun. And I made my boyfriend a matching jacket in just two days. And here you can see that in the middle picture, I wore the dress with the train up all the way, usually the entire day, to keep it a bit more practical. But we had a great time.